I'm going to go over how to do metric conversions. Now metric conversions is something that you've done in other science classes, but it is something that a lot of kids need review with. The first thing you have to know is that uh, you need to be able to memorize this table. This table does not have all of the metric conversions out there. It doesn't include deca or deci because these are the ones that are the most common on the AP test. So you have here your basic unit and you need to know that a milli is 10 to the third or one thousandth of a basic unit. Micro is 10 to the negative sixth. And uh, a micron, which has this symbol of a mu, um, um, is 10 to the negative six. A micron is actually a micrometer. And so we, we call that a micron. On occasion, it's rare, but on occasion you'll have nano and pico but the most common ones that you can see are the basic, the milli, and the micro. And then also you see a lot of kilo. On occasion you see mega and giga. Now, um, you should also be aware that mega means million. So 10 to the 6 is a million, and you should have that memorized. You should also know that a giga at 10 to the 9th is a billion, and that's something you should have memorized as well. So you do need to memorize for the AP Environmental Science exam this chart. Now, before we go on, take a minute and read through how to solve with metric conversions, and then we'll go on to problem number one. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to add in this chart, very rarely, but you see it sometimes, you have centi, and centi is 10 to the negative two, so you should add that here. Um, so you'll see if you have worked with a meter stick, you'll know that there's a hundred centimeters in a meter. And on occasion, you will find centi. After you're done pausing and reading through how to solve, let's go ahead and solve. So number one, one nanometer equals how many meters? So you need to refer to the chart and it says that a nano is 10 to the negative ninth. And so you can just go ahead and put nanometer is 10 to the negative ninth um, as a meter. That's a pretty simple answer. Or you can do it with all the zeros. So it's actually eight zeros and a one. And that would be meters. Number two. 1.5 kilogram is how many grams? Okay, so for this one, we have 1.5 kilograms. Now, what you need to do is look at the chart because the chart is going to tell you what kilo means. And eventually, you should memorize this. So a kilo is 10 to the third. So that little three tells me I need to move the decimal three spots. But which way? So if you can't remember which way, the easiest thing to do is to think of opposites. So kilogram is a larger unit than gram. And therefore, this answer must be, um, it must be a bigger number. So if you're going to a smaller unit, it means you need a larger number here. And so you're going to move the decimal places three spots to get to a larger number. And so to make a larger number, I'm going to go one, two, three, and fill in with zeros. Here's my new decimal point. So my answer is 1,500 grams. So again, this is a larger number than this, and that's because this is a smaller unit than kilograms. And that's the easiest way to do it. Now, how many decimal places? We use this number here. So it, a kilogram is 10 to the third, and that third is going to tell you how many places to move. Going on to number three, 19.42 milliliters is equal to how many liters? So on my chart, I can look, and it says a milli is 10 to the negative, Three. And liter is a basic unit, so it's nothing. So we'll just put a little zero here. Um, not a six, a zero. Um, that's just to tell me that it's a basic unit. Don't treat it as a zero mathematically. 
So we need to move our decimal three spots because of this negative three. Which way? Well, milli is smaller than um, the regular unit, just liter. So a milliliter is smaller than a liter. So we're going to a bigger unit. And because this is a bigger unit, the number here must be smaller. So I need to move the decimal three places to make it a smaller number. So I'm going to move it this way to make it a smaller number. So my answer is 0 0.01942 liter. And that's the answer to three. Number four, 18.7 microns. So a micron is 10 to the negative six. So a micron is a mu and is equal to how many nanometers? All right, so on our chart, it says 18.7 is 10 to the negative six. So I put a little negative six here. And then nano is a negative nine. Now I'm gonna find the difference. So nine minus six is three. So I'm gonna move the decimal three spots. So when you have uh, a number here and, and here, it, you're gonna subtract and we're gonna get three. And so my, it's, it's technically a negative three, but that it doesn't matter for our purposes because we're just taking the difference between them as a, um, without a positive or negative. So our difference is going to be three And so we will um, move the decimal three spots. So this is bigger than this. So this number is smaller. And I'm going to need a bigger or larger number here. So I've got to make this larger. So I'm going to take the decimal. I'm going to move it once, twice, three times. I'm going to fill in with zeros. So 18,700 nanometers. All right, going on to number five, 25 joules is equal to how many kilojoules? Okay, so um, the joule and kilojoules, so joule is a standard unit, it ha really has no exponent, um, and so kilo is a positive three. And so it's, we just need to move the decimal three spots, but which way? We're going to a larger unit, so we need a smaller number. One, two, three, fill in with a zero. And our answer is 0.25 kilojoules. Number six, 60 watts equal how many kilowatts? So watt is a measure of electricity. Okay. So uh, a watt is a standard unit, and a kilo is 10 to the third, so I need to move my decimal three spaces. I'm going to a larger unit from watts. Kilowatts is bigger, so my number here has to be smaller. So I'm going to move my decimal one, two, three, and my answer is 0.6 kilowatts. If you're getting the hang of it, pause the video and check your and start to do some of the problems and then turn back on the video to check your answer, to check your answers. Okay, so I'm going from nanoliters to microliters. And uh, a nano is going to be 10 to the negative ninth. And a microliter is 10 to the negative 6. So I'm going to track, subtract, and I there's a difference of 3. And so I'm going to move the decimal 3 spaces, but which way? So we have here uh, nano is smaller, and this is bigger. So this is a bigger number, bigger unit, sorry. And so we need a smaller number here. So I'm going to move the decimal to make it smaller. 1, 2, 3. So my answer is 0.4962 microliters. Number eight. Nine 
93.1 milliliter is equal to how many microliters? So um, a milli is 10 to the negative 3. A micro is 10 to the negative 6. There's a difference of 3, so let's move the decimal 3 places. And we're going to a smaller unit, so I need a bigger number. So 1, 2, 3, and so my answer is 93100 microliters. Number nine, particulate matter. A piece of particulate matter measures 2.5 microns. How many nanometers is this? So 2.5, it's a micron, which is a micrometer. And oh, I want nanometers. So a micro is negative six, a nano is negative nine. There's a difference of three. So I need to make this Let's see, this is a smaller unit, so I need a bigger number. So my answer is 2,500. Number 10, Mrs. Schertz drove 570 kilometers from Santa Clarita to Sacramento. How many meters was this? So I'm going from kilometers to meters. Kilometers is 10 to the third. Meter is a standard unit, so it's really nothing. So the difference is three. Meters is smaller, so my number here has to be bigger. So I'm going to move it three spots. And my answer is 570,000 meters. Number 11. The Valencia Reclamation Plant reclaims 5.68 million liters of wastewater each day. How many megaliters is this? Okay, so a million is 10 to the six. Oh, but wait, that's also a mega. A mega is also a million. So this is not really a, kind of a trick. It's not supposed to be a trick question. Um, so it's basically 5.68 million liters is really a megaliter. And so you just need to remember that. So this problem is, is designed to make you remember that. Number 12, an iPad has 64 gigabytes of memory. So 64 gigabytes. How many bytes is this? Okay, so a gigabyte is 10 to the um, ninth. So we can just write this as 64 times 10 to the ninth bytes, but that's not proper scientific notation. So we're gonna move the decimal over once and make it 10 to the 10th. So 6.4 times 10 to the 10th. And that's how many bytes there are. Number 13. 13 is an electricity problem that's um, a little bit strange. Let me go over it. A light bulb's weight rated at 100 watts. So it's a capital W for watts and it's on for five hours a day on average. How many kilowatt hours does this light bulb use each month of 30 days? So we have 100 watts times five hours per day. And we'll say um, the month, uh, it tells us the month is 30 days in the month. So when you multiply all of that out, our days cancel. And what's sort of different about when you use watts, what you do is you actually combine watts and hours to make watt hours. So 100 times five is 500 times 30 is 15,000. And this is watt hours and this is per month so uh, the hours and the watts actually smush together to make a new unit of watt hours but electricity is actually measured in kilowatt hours so we're going to change watts to kilowatts and um, so it's kilowatt hours and we're going to um, move the decimal three spaces to make it a smaller number because unit so one two three and you have 
15. So our answer is 15 kilowatt hours per month. And your electricity bill comes out as kilowatt hours. All right, so now we're going to um, area conversions. So 14. So convert five kilometers to meters squared. So the first thing we have to do, five kilometers squared, is we have to reduce it. So five times one equals five. So I'm gonna do five kilometers times one kilometer. And then I'm going to now change this to meters. So I can't just do, oh, this would be 5,000 meters squared because kilometers to meter, you move the decimal three spots. This is not correct. You first, you have to reduce it to here and then you can change it to meters. So five kilometers is actually 5,000 meters. And then one kilometer is 1,000 meters. And then we can multiply this to get five with six zeros. And that's five million meters squared or we can change it to proper scientific notation like this. One question that students often have about this problem is how come for this number up here, how come you don't do it as five meters times five meters? Doesn't that give you five kilometers squared? It, it doesn't give you five kilometers squared. So you have to do five times one to get the kilometers squared. All right, 15, calculate the area uh, in centimeters of a table that's two meters squared. So let's go ahead and reduce our two meters and we can reduce it to two meters times one meter and let's change it to centimeters. So going from meters to centimeters, centimeter is 10 to the negative two, so I need to move my decimal two places. So I'm going to um, change this to 200 centimeters times 100 centimeters. And then I'm going to multiply that out. So two times one is two, and let me count my zeros. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. And it's like this. And oh, and this is centimeters squared. So 20,000 centimeters squared. And number 16, a shopping center's parking lot is 200 meters long and 100 meters wide. How many kilometers is this? So we are going to first um, change it to kilometers. So meters to kilometers. We're going to a larger unit, so I need a smaller number, and this is 10 to the third. So I'm going to move my decimal one, two, three to get 0.2. And so this is going to be 2.2 kilometers. That's for the first one. It says that's kilometers long and then it's times 100 meters wide. And so 100 meters is 0.1 kilometer. And then from here I can do 0.2 times 0.1, which is two, but you notice I have, um, I have to count my decimals when I multiply. So one, two. So here's my decimal, one, two. New decimal, fill it in. So my answer is 0 0.02 kilometers squared. Number 17. All right, for 17. Five centimeters of rain lands on this parking lot in a storm. Calculate the volume of stormwater runoff this surface generates. So we know that the shopping center's parking lot, it tells us in problem 16, is 200 meters long times 100 meters wide. And um, now we want volume, so we want height. And it tells us five centimeters is our height. But five centimeters is not meters, so you need to change these all to meters or change them all to centimeters. Either way, it works. But 
let's go ahead and change this one to meters. So Sunday is 10 to the negative 2, so I've got to move this decimal once twice to get to meters. Okay, so now I'm going to add, so 2 times 1 is 2, and then there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.05. So 5 times 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, and then 5 times 2 is 10. And my decimal needs to be moved back once, twice, so once, twice. So my answer is 1,000 meters cubed because I have um, 1 times 2 times 3 meters, and that makes a meters cubed. And that's it.